Leatherette. Warm. Leatherette. Join. The car crash set. In Western mainstream media right now, we're hearing a lot about Islamic fundamentalism, nuclear proliferation, rogue states, and public enemy number one is Iran. The Iranians are moving forward with their nuclear program quicker than expected. Iran's president is warning it is too late to stop Iran's nuclear program. Iran basically has a strategy to dominate the region. What I can tell you is that Iran must be stopped. Now it's interesting to us that on one hand you have footage like this from Fox News saying that Iran is an imminent threat, but on the other hand you have all these films coming out where critics are saying, hey, these are some of the best films coming out right now, they're beautiful, they're amazing, they're great. So how is it that we have on one side an Islamic fundamentalist state, but on the other all these amazing movies? We had to go to Iran and find out the truth behind Iranian cinema. Getting into Iran as a journalist is nearly impossible. They have a very bad reputation with journalists. Many have been arrested, a lot have been tortured, and some have even been killed. In fact, there's a World Press Freedom Index, and Iran is number 166, right at the back of the bus, with only the worst offenders like Turkmenistan, North Korea, Eritrea, and Cuba ahead of it. Now, what scared me personally about going into Iran as a journalist was that I knew two things. One is that Zara Kazemi, a Canadian journalist who got into Iran, was kidnapped, raped, and beaten to death in 2003, and that our friend Ben Anderson from the BBC, who did Holidays in the Axis of Evil, went in with a handy cam and was kidnapped and tortured for a week before they kicked him out without his tapes. So we didn't want to go in with a handy cam, and we didn't want to sneak in like we usually do. So we tried for about a year and a half to get into the country legitimately. And finally, the producers of the third International Urban Film Festival got us our visas, arranged for us to be able to bring in the cameras, and did the impossible and got us into Iran. We got the doo on thing, but like if the cops see a camera, they turn their their bloopers on. <laughs> we're waiting for permission to shoot outside, so we're shooting from the car, which we're not supposed to do either. Police. 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 Uh, why? Why do they? Why do? Why don't they want people shooting? With your small camera, you don't have any problem. It's just the size of the camera which makes it professional as a journalist. When you have a big camera, you need to have permission. Can I shoot with this guy around or no? Uh, it's better not to do it now. We were told from the first day we got there that we weren't allowed to shoot anything that didn't have to do with film. And they warned us that we could be arrested if we shot anything that had to do with police, military, or the government, which is basically everything in Iran. The only places we could really shoot freely were when we were indoors or things that were directly sponsored by the film festival, and even then it wasn't easy. We're about to meet the coordinator of the film festival here, and um, along the way here, we were told that we're being watched, and they talk a lot about our beards. <laughs> they want to know if we got beards just to come here and why we're dressed the way we are, why we're so dressed up, but we were told to wear suits. <laughs> so there's all kinds of uh, undercurrents that we don't know anything about, so we're trying to be good baby boys and not get in trouble. So we were nervous, we were freaked out. We got there, and he had a nice office. We sat down, and it was kind of like talking to a super cool Omar Sharif or something. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Fine. Good, Good to, to see, see you. you. Thanks for dropping by. <laughs> Ali Reza Shoja Nuri was one of the guys who's responsible for taking Iranian cinema to all the film festivals during the 80s and 90s. For myself, that I was mm, promoting the Iranian films abroad, then came the big question that, do we have any place in the world? Is anyone waiting for our cinema? And the first film that we succeeded was Thrusty Roads, 86, I think, 85, 86. It went to Berlin Film Festival. And when I saw the uh, response of the audience there, 
And I, I found out that yes, it's possible to do that. And then we went to do other films and other festivals. At that time we made one objective for us that we are going for a day that there would be no festival in the world without Iranian film. And we, we got to that point. Is there a, a big culture of going to the cinema, yes. a big culture of, of, of going to watch movies? Yes. The Iranian people like films very much, very, very much. Mm -hmm. They like the school of their children and they like cinema. <laughs> The next place they took us was to Cannes Cinema, or the House of Iranian Cinema. And there, we walked into kind of a really surreal situation, because even though most American films are banned in Iran, they had invited the American Academy Awards people over, for the first time in 35 years, to exchange information on film and film festivals. So we walk into the building, and the president of the Academy, Sid Gaines, is over here. Oh, there's Annette Benning, who we had heard in the Western media before flying to Iran, had been arrested and forced to apologize to the Iranian people for the Hollywood propaganda of films like The 300, The Wrestler, and Not Without My Daughter. Meanwhile, we go to the House of Cinema, and there they are. Everybody's having lunch together. There's no problems. Everybody really likes each other. This is going to get super weird. They're going to wonder who the hell we are. We're going to totally crash this lunch. What if they ask what the fuck we're doing here? We just pretend to be Iranian. So we were there just shooting around, and the Americans thought we were Iranian secret police, and the Iranians thought we just knew each other. That was great. Before leaving the House of Cinema, we went downstairs to check out their filmmaker's library. And when we were there, we asked one of the board members what he thought about this whole apologizing business. So who, who asked them to apologize? Nobody knows this. This is something that came up in the media. Nothing. 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 Nothing.